This story is called Hat Takes Off. Pat's holiday was over, but it was still summer in Greendale. Some days were hot and sunny, some days it poured with rain. People came to Greendale for their holidays. They walked over the hills and pitched their tents in Alf Thompson's fields. Pat brought the campers letters from their friends in the town and collected their postcards with pictures of the mountains and lakes on them to send to their friends back home. Everyone looked forward to seeing Pat's van. There were other vans, too, that came along the valley. The milk van came very early, whilst Pat was still in bed. Then there was Sam Waldron with his mobile shop. The butcher's van came on Wednesdays, and the fishman on Thursdays. The Pencaster bus came by twice a day. The one that young Julian liked best of all was the mobile library. This had two people on it. Jim, the driver, and Nelly, the library lady. They stopped by the garden gate, opened the sliding door, and let down a little step. Then Jim would give a toot on his horn to tell you they were there. When you went inside, all the walls were covered with books just like a real library. Nelly had bright blue eyes. She helped you to find your books, then stamped the date in them in purple ink. Jim told stories about all the people he knew in Greendale and Pencaster. Sarah was so busy listening to Jim that she almost forgot to pick her books. She used to say, Jim's stories are better than the ones in the books. Julian never forgot to pick his books. He went straight to the shelf of picture books at the back of the van. One day he found a book called The Flying Postman. It had lovely pictures, and it was a story about a postman who flew in a small aeroplane to deliver his letters. When Pat came home for his tea, Julian showed him the book. They sat in the big armchair, and Pat read the story to Julian. Hmm, said Pat. What do you think of that? A flying postman. Goodness me, I could get round quickly with an aeroplane. I could whiz over the hills in a twinkling and drop the letters down the chimney pots. They'd get sooty and burn up in the fire, said Julian. I'll not bother then, said Pat. Tea's ready, Sarah called. The next day there was a letter for Pat. It was rather a strange letter. It began, Dear Pat, how would you like to meet Prince Charles? Prince Charles, said Pat, whatever is all this about? He found out when he read the rest of the letter. The post office was having a big celebration for its 350th birthday. I didn't know it was as old as that, said Pat, though it feels like it sometimes. You are invited to the celebrations at Bagshot Park on the 30th of July, the letter went on. Prince Charles will fly in by helicopter, and there will be many exhibitions and displays. Can we all go? said Julian. Of course, said Pat. But where is it? I'll, I'll ask Miss Hubbard to look in her atlas. Pat thought about the invitation all day, and he told all his friends that he was going to meet Prince Charles himself. When he called on Miss Hubbard, she got the big atlas down from its shelf and looked up Bagshot. Bless us, she said. It's a long way away from Greendale. You'll have to get a train to London, and then another train to Bagshot. You'll nearly be back at Brighton. Oh, dear, said Pat. I've used up all my holiday for this year. Julian and Sarah will be sad if we can't go. But another letter came by the next post, from the head postmaster in Pencaster. He said it was a great honour for Pat to be invited to Bagshot, and that he could have time off to go. With the letter there was a free railway ticket for the journey for Pat, 
Sarah and Julian. They all shouted, Hoorah! It'll be like an extra holiday, said Pat. And so it was. They set out again one sunny morning on the bus and the train for Bagshot. This time they also had a taxi ride across London, in a big black London taxi. Then there was another train to catch, and at last they arrived at Bagshot. That was a surprise too, because it was a tiny country station. When the train had rumbled away, there was no one about at all. There was an empty platform, a road going off into the trees, and no sign of the celebrations. Where is everyone? said Pat. I suppose we'd better walk down this road. They came to a main road with cars whizzing along. There was a small town with a few shops. It's not as big as Pencaster, said Sarah. Then they spotted a big gate with a policeman standing by it. That looks like a park, said Julian. We'll ask that policeman, said Pat. He looks nice and helpful. Pat showed the policeman his ticket for the celebrations, and the policeman said, This way, sir. And they were soon walking up a long drive lined by trees with fields full of cows on each side. It's like Greendale, only flatter, said Pat. Then a helicopter zoomed overhead, just above the trees. <laughs> it's not like Greendale, said Pat. It was a long walk up the drive. At first they could only see trees and little rounded hills. Then they saw tents, post office vans and trucks and lots of policemen. There it is, said Julian, hopping with excitement. Hurry up! It was a lovely show and there were hundreds of postmen and their families there to enjoy the fun. I didn't know there were so many postmen, said Pat. There was a display of old post office vans and uniforms. I wouldn't like to wear that one, said Pat. And I'd get on badly riding a horse. What's that big thing over there? said Julian. They went to look. It was a hot air balloon. It puffed up into the air when the fire roared into its mouth and swelled and billowed until it was the biggest thing that they had ever seen. There was a large basket fastened underneath it, hanging from ropes. A postman came up to them and said, Would you like a ride? Oh, yes, please, said Julian, before Pat had a chance to speak. The postman led them across the grass and lifted Julian into the basket. Pat climbed in after him and held on to the rope with all his strength. He felt a bit wobbly at the knees. I'll stay on the ground, thanks, said Sarah. The man made the fire roar into the balloon and slowly the basket lifted off the ground. Oh dear, said Pat. I'm not sure that I want to be a flying postman after all. They rose up and up above the treetops. Julian looked down and saw the people below looking up at them growing smaller and smaller. He waved to Sarah. Pat didn't dare to look down. He closed his eyes tightly. I hope we're soon going down, he said. It's great, cried Julian. I want to go up into the clouds. They rose still higher, way above the trees now, until they could see far across the hills of Surrey. The balloon was tied to the ground by a long rope, so that it would not drift right away. Now they were at the end of the rope, and they could feel it pulling at them. The man turned the fire off, and the balloon began to sink down again. Down past the treetops, until they touched the ground with a gentle bump. That was lovely, said Julian. Thank you very much. I think I'll be a flying postman when I grow up. Thank you, said Pat. Oh dear, I do feel funny. It's lovely to be on the ground again. He walked in a wobbly way back to Sarah. Julian stayed in the basket and went up again with the next lot of people. There was more flying later on, 
with the man in a tiny aeroplane. That's like the plane in that book, said Julian. It's a microlight, said Pat, and I'm not going up in it. It swooped and zoomed over and round the trees, looping back and forth like a swallow. I'd love to go in it, said Julian, but it only had a seat for the pilot. You've done enough flying for one day, said Sarah. I've done enough forever, said Pat. The next excitement began with a big RAF helicopter coming in low over the trees. A crackly voice on the loudspeakers told them that this was Prince Charles arriving with the new stamps that had been made especially for the day. The helicopter landed by a big house some distance away amongst the trees. There was quite a long wait while the prince met all the important people. Then there was the sound of a trumpet and a clatter of horses' hooves, and Prince Charles rode into the show ring, sitting high up on an old-fashioned stagecoach next to the coachman. There was a cheer from the crowd and music playing on the speakers. Pat held Julian up so that he could see. The prince chatted with some postmen in old-fashioned uniforms and made a speech. There was a short play about how King Charles the First started the post all those years ago. There were more speeches. The prince went to see the exhibitions, and soon it was time for him to fly home in the big helicopter. I'm glad I didn't have to meet him," said Pat. "I wouldn't have known what to say." You could have told him about your ride in the balloon," said Sarah. They had a picnic under the trees and saw more of the show. After a long and busy day, it was time at last to catch the train home. Julian was so tired that he slept nearly all the way. It was dark and late when they arrived at Pencaster Station. The Reverend Timms had come to meet them in the old car they knew so well. They were so glad to see him. And how did you get on at Bagshot? He said. But they were all too tired to tell him. We'll tell you properly tomorrow," said Pat. How dark and quiet Greendale seemed after all the rush and busyness of the day. As the Reverend Timms drove along the winding roads, owls called in the shadow of the oak trees, and bats flitted through the headlights. A fox barked somewhere on the hillside. The moon shone on the lake. It's good to be back," said Pat. 